In dealing with data, we sometimes have to create regular sequences and R provides convenient functions and operators to do this. So let's take a quick look at some of these things. So here we'll be understanding the use of the colon operator and we'll create sequences using that operator. And then of course there are many expressions which involve colon and the operator precedence works in a certain way. We'll understand that. And then we'll learn the intricacies of the SEQ or seek function. So let's take a look at some ways to generate regular sequences. So you can do an expression like 1 colon 10. Okay, so this is just the expression 1 colon 10. And this will return this result. It will return the vector of numbers from 1 to 10. So what we really did is we used the colon operator and the colon operator produces a vector of regular sequences. So the result of 1 colon 10 is this. Of course, you could have assigned the result to something. So I could have said x is assigned 1 colon 10 and then x would have been the vector. It would have had the values 1 through 10. Okay. Of course, you can also do c 1 colon 10 but this is really meaningless, right? Because 1 colon 10 already produces a vector. What's the point of saying c 1 colon 10? Okay. This is just redundant. It's correct but shouldn't be used like this. Let's consider something like this. So 2 star 1 colon 10. So here what's happening is you've got two operators. One is the multiplication operator. And the other is the colon operator. And the result of this expression depends upon which is done first. So let's assume for example, for instance, that the star multiplication is done first. In that case, this is like saying 2 times 1 which is 2 and then colon 10. So the result is going to be the result of 2 colon 10, which will be 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, the 10, the vector. On the other hand, if the colon were done first, then what you will get is 1 colon 10, which is this vector, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and that whole vector is multiplied by 2. So you'll get the result of 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, etc., up to 20. So the point is, what is going to be the result of this expression? And I had already said that this result is going to depend upon which operator is done first. Okay? It so happens that the colon operator has a very high precedence. right? And therefore, even though we have written the expression like this, the colon operator is going to get executed first and therefore the result you're going to get is this. right? So what happened was we said 1 colon 10 because the colon operator has a higher precedence. So we get the vector 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 multiplied by 2. So the result is this. Okay. So when we are using the colon operator, or in fact any expressions, we need to worry about, we need to think about what is the operator precedence and that is going to affect the result. So again, if we did something like 1 colon 10 star 2, it's really the same as this, right? Because it doesn't matter where you put it, the colon operator has a higher precedence. It's going to happen first no matter what and the result is going to be exactly the same. So let's look at some more examples. So again, if you want 1 colon n minus 1, okay, and you're going to get this result. But of course, you know, the colon operator has a higher precedence. Uh, therefore, suppose you had done 1 colon n minus 1, then the result would be quite different, right? So 1 colon n minus 1, if n is 11, then the result is going to be 1 up to 10 because I'm saying, you know, n is 11, not 10. Right? So what is going to happen is, uh, the, because this is in parentheses, this is going to get executed first. Right? So even though the colon operator has a higher precedence, the minus is going to get executed first because parentheses have the highest precedence. So the parentheses, parenthesized expression is going to get executed first. So n minus 1 is going to get executed first and if n was 11, n minus 1 is going to become 10 and therefore you are then going to get 1 colon 10 which is this result. Right? So if you just did 1 colon n minus 1, you would get a different result. That is because the colon has a higher precedence. So 1 colon n will be 1 colon 10 okay? and that will be 1 through 10 and then you are going to subtract 1 from each element. You will then get 0 up to 10, assuming again that n was 11. Right? So you have to think about the operator precedence carefully. Now let's take a look at the seek function which is a more powerful and a more general function for generating regular sequences. 
So if I did seek 1, 10, I'm saying generate a sequence of the numbers from 1 to 10. And you'll get the sequence 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. By default, the seek function is going to increment by 1. And that is why you got this. So this is seek 1, 10 is exactly the same as 1, 10. But I can also say seek from equals 1, 2 equals 10. We are just using the named arguments. The first argument's name is from, the second argument's name is 2. So I'm just calling it with the name. So it's the same thing. I can also control what is the incrementing value. By default, the increment is 1. But suppose I say increment it by 2. And I can give this argument by equals 2. So I can say seek from equals 1, 2 equals 10, by equals 2. Then, of course, I will get 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. Start going to start from 1, keep increasing by 2, right? And then, of course, the it'll uh, when the number exceeds 10 or equals 10, after that it stops, right? So after 9, of course, you get 11, which is greater than 10. So it says stop because it says go only up to 10. It's not going to go up to 11. That'll work. It also happens that from, to, and by are actually the first three arguments to the seek function. So I could simply have said seek 1, 10, 2. That would have also worked fine. I can also increment by fractional values. So by equals point. So with by equals 0.5, we get this result. So you get 1, 1 1.5 all the way up to 9.510. So that's fine. Uh, so the next thing we can look at is there are some more options with this. So I can start from a negative number. I can also end with a negative number if I want. And of course, here notice that I'm assigning the result to a variable. Because seek function generates a vector. You can either just use the function, see the result on the console, or assign the result resulting vector to a variable. That's fine. And of course, here I'm doing increasing by 0 0.2, a fractional value. So here, since I assigned the value to a variable, nothing is going to print out. And I print the give the variable name as a command, and I get the result. That's fine. Um, I can then also say, give me a sequence of a certain length. Right Till now, we've been saying, start from this, go up to that. And we've been controlling, let's say, how much it should increase by. By default, that is 1. On the other hand, I can give the starting number and just give a length, in which case it's going to, uh, it's going to determine the finishing number by itself. So here we get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, because we have not specified how much to increment each time by. And the default for that is 1. And therefore, you get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Or I can say explicitly length is 5, start from 1, increase by 0 0.3. Okay, so it'll do 1, 1 1.3, 1.6, 1.9, 2.2, etc., etc. Okay, in fact, that we wanted a length uh, sequence of length 5, so it starts at, uh, stops at 2.2, right? So you can specify the starting point and the length and give the increment and it'll you'll get a vector of that length. Okay, you cannot, of course, specify the starting point, the ending point, and the length, right? Obviously, because uh, you, you know they may not actually match up; they may become inconsistent. Okay, so this is all we need to know for now about using regular sequences. You can look at the documentation for more features, but I don't suspect that we'll ever have to use anything more than these.